Guam, and thanks for starting your day the KUAM way. Well, uh, here at Awenaga Elementary, of course, Historica Day, first day of school, Superintendent John Fernandez. Um, I, I guess just real quick, I know you came from uh, Jose Rio, so let's kind of do a little personal uh, touch here. Proud public school parent. Uh, so your boy started Jose Rios today, and how was that? Well, you know, he's entering sixth grade, so uh, transitioning from elementary to middle school is, is tough. Uh, you know they want to give you a big hug and a kiss before you leave, but then again, their boys are around. They don't want you to get too close. So right. um, they able to, you know, get him set situated in school. Once you get his friends around, uh, I think things are okay. So I let go ahead and let him go and uh, hope the, the rest of the day goes smoothly for him. Uh, you know, once they get that first class going, um, I'm sure it'll all you know, sort of come together, and the teachers and staff will help make sure he knows where to go. But uh, yeah, no, it's a, that first tra that transition, whether it's elementary to middle, uh, middle to high school, uh, we always kind of watch the parents, not just myself, but all the nervous parents around, right, right. Uh, trying to make sure uh, they, they either uh, get that last picture or, or get rejected in that effort. <laughs> so uh, a lot of first experiences uh, this morning, because I was at JFK uh, earlier, so a lot of freshmen and freshman parents too are doing the same thing. Right, and so this, uh, you know, kind of, I mean, for you guys, it's almost like Christmas morning and that you prep, uh, you know, I mean, pretty much all year for this uh, first day of school, and then you just set it into motion and uh, see what happens. So I guess just a uh, report back, let's start with uh, JFK. You know, high schools start earlier than uh, the middle and elementary, so so how was that? Yeah, well, everything was smooth at JFK. Um, I mean, that you know, the students are out there greeting their fellow students, uh, you know, to the NHS, the student council, uh, buses, they seem to be working smoothly. I'm sure we'll hear, hear more later in the morning. Um, you know, yeah, this is maybe my seventh, uh, eighth, uh, first day of school, but uh, even last night I was a little tossing and turning. And I, I felt like a kid about to start my first day because we've been prepping all summer, uh, going through a lot of trainings, uh, getting the staff, getting the teachers ready to go, but this is it. This is game time. So uh, all that hard work, I think people were just ready to you know, have the kids show up. And then once, it, once, once the school year starts, that first day, you know, then things start to move more quickly. But again, we've been waiting all summer for this day, so uh, it was exciting to see the kids come in. Uh, you know, my, my experience, uh, I got three kids up at uh, D.L. Paris, and uh, you talk about your son uh, starting a sixth grade? Sixth grade, yeah. Sixth grade. So I got a fourth grader, and wow, all of a sudden he's all grown up, you know, not daddy's boy anymore this morning. And I was trying to, you know, make a little conversation, show his friends that I'm the cool dad, and he was like, no, dad, shh, shh, just go, just go. So I'm pretty sure all across the island, uh, parents, I mean, I had to bribe my two little ones with, uh, you know, after school snacks just to get a picture, you know, as parents, right. uh, I mean, you want to get that back to school picture. Did you get yours? I, I did get them, but I had to kind of trick them a little bit, you know, uh, get grab that quick selfie uh, before they know it, uh, get them, uh, also get them with their friends if you can. So, you know, sixth grader, I also have a sophomore. So I mean, once they get to their sophomores, you take the picture in the car and then you just let them go uh, at the front gate. So, um, okay. Yeah, but you know, uh, I, I just love the parents who come out and try to you know, enjoy that first day with their kids. I mean, we, we just stress so much, you know, family involvement, parent, parental involvement. So that's part of it, that first, uh, that first day uh, uh, routine and that first day, uh, you know, excitement. So we hope they stick with it. You know, the, the kids might seem like they don't want you there or want you around, but we need them, uh, we need the parents around right. for the rest of, you know, all throughout high school as well. What's that like for you to juggle? I mean, obviously the superintendent in charge of, you know, over 40 uh, public schools here in Guam. How do you juggle um, that role, uh, which is a very public role, with your role as a dad of, you know, public school kids? Well, for me, I think I've been trying to manage it pretty easily. It's, uh, you probably have to ask my family that, right? I mean, but uh, I try to make sure that, uh, you know, when it's my kids' events, just go there as a parent, sit with the parents, you know, and make sure that, uh, you know, I pay attention to the kids and give them that, that time and, um, you know, my, my girl's in sports, so I'm always there as a parent cheering on the sports. Other schools might say, well, how come you're not there as much? Well, you know, it's my girl's uh, competition. I'm, I gotta, I got to be there yeah, first. Yeah. So uh, just trying to balance that. It's, it's a little difficult, but um, I think people just like seeing you out anyway. So whether or not you're, you're at your, your child's game, uh, just being there to interact and listen to, to people who have uh, complaints or who have uh, commendations, uh, I think their ability to come and just talk to me, you know, wherever I'm at, this uh, has been good for, for me to learn on the job as well as be a better parent and, and superintendent at the same time. Uh, you talk about challenges. Let's talk about some of the challenges you feel that are uh, facing the department uh, in this upcoming uh, school year. Well, you know, I think the biggest challenge that we have um, is going to be the uh, facilities issues that that we continue to struggle with, right? So our, our big issue is trying to, to secure enough resources to, to fix these facilities and not just band-aid them up, but you know, some of our schools are older. This is actually in pretty good shape, but some of our schools need major renovation. And so uh, when we have this public debate about where the resources go, 
I'm telling uh, you know our elected officials, our community that you know you've got to invest in our schools. This is you want you want us to be safe. You want to make sure there's a, there's a good learning environment, but we got to put our money where our mouth is. And so I'm coming in, you know, seven, eight years on the job, and uh, while we, I think we've done a lot to really support teachers, support kids, try to build a better environment, that's the one thing that's outstanding, as being, just have a, having a commitment to fixing our school facilities. And I mean, uh, you, you guys were looking at some uh, budget problems uh, heading in, and then you kind of had to switch gears and prepare for uh, the school year. So how do you maintain that dialogue with uh, the senators and, and the administration while uh, simultaneously making sure that all our uh, I's are dotted and our T's are crossed? Well, I think, uh, well, one way I say it is that, you know, someone, sometimes people elect on the elected side uh, or staff will come up and say, well, you know, you guys make up 40% 40, uh, 40 of the budget. And I say, yeah, but we're not 40% of your problem. I mean, when you look at all the news out there, you look at the crime, the, all the things, you know, this is the place where you invest so you can build a positive community, right? This is where you want to put. So when you say we absorb 40% uh, you know, percent of the budget, what we're doing in school is really set to create a positive future for the community. So that's where you want to invest. It shouldn't be used against us. And what you should be grateful for is that uh, when you come to school, for the most part, even though we have issues here and there, uh, your kids are in a safe place. They got experienced administrators, teachers, staff who care about them and want to see them succeed. Well, we got uh, people tuning in from uh, Las Vegas, uh, Tennessee, and then uh, kind of a little uh, Twitter uh, mention here. There's a guy on Twitter because uh, I know you're really active on yeah. Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Super Nintendo John Fernandez. Oh my goodness! Yeah. That's one of my fav one of my favorite guys to follow on Twitter. You know, absolutely. Um, so I mean, he's like the the person I would like to be if I wasn't in such a public right. role. So yeah, so I follow him, and so I. That's not you. It's not me, uh, but I do run into him every now and then. Right, and right. I just, uh, and so we we actually have a couple of photos together to actually <laughs> make sure that we're not the same person. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. no, I he, he's a funny guy, but I love the love the the. Uh, the parody or the play on uh, the name, though. Super right. Ninten Nintendo John Fernando. Right. So, yeah, follow him. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, there you go. I got a follow shout. And let's uh, go in here. They're doing a little uh, assembly. Maybe you can kind of explain what uh, what's going on in here with uh, the kids. Good morning. So what's going on here is uh, we have some first graders and second graders uh, starting out the day in an assembly with the administrator and their teachers. And uh, the message today was uh, think smart. Uh, but the, but I think the biggest thing for them is to make sure that um, I think what, what Wedding Hill is trying to do is promote health as a, as, a, as a component of the curriculum. And so they've talked a little bit about thinking smart, uh, about what you put in your body, trying to look at for more healthy options, cut down on the sugary foods and so forth. So Wedding Hill is actually a, a school that really focuses on the whole child. You know, uh, They really make that a very explicit uh, expectation. So that uh, they started off early. And so I said they got them on the first day saying, hey, you know, watch out for all the sugary snacks and uh, let's try to be a, have a healthy lifestyle this, this year. And that's uh, something that, you know, honestly, I remember when I was going back at uh, school and even uh, as little as, you know, five, six years ago, we never thought you would be getting the kids to eat brown rice and to have a healthier... You were in school uh, five or six years ago? Yeah, you know. This so. was like <laughs> I, had, I knew a guy, I knew a guy. <laughs> but, you know, we never really yeah. couldn't wrap my mind around it right. and it looks like it's uh, working. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, again, with the kids, this... We sometimes focus on reading and math and writing, and that's you know the main uh, you know elements of your education. But you know we care about the kids and how they how they interact with each other, how they take care of themselves. Um, I think we're just trying to change our mindset. And you know, for those of us who say you know it's not our job, I've tried to say to uh, our staff, our teachers, that it's our job to make sure that these kids come out you know successful and able to participate in the community. So if we can put that extra effort in, let's please try to do that because it's so important. Uh, to the island that these kids come out not just knowing how to read, knowing how to write and do math, but to be good citizens. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing what the, what the other schools are doing. I mean, I think you've seen a lot of schools embrace that message, uh, especially for our kids in need, right? I mean, talking about, you know, uh, poverty you see out in the community, the health care issues. Uh, we really see the school community as a place where people are able to come together and support these families. It's like a big uh, safe space. And you talk about uh, in poverty, uh, once again, all uh, DOE lunches uh, and meals free this year, right? Well, you know how people say, well, you know, 40% of, of our budget goes to you. So why are you asking? I say, well, look, we had so many volunteers out there this weekend painting bus shelters. Right. Not their job. We go, we go out to the homeless shelters. We do typhoon shelters. We uh, participated and let the, the homeless coalition count to try to reach out to our community. So that's kind of the message out there that right. we want to be the positive player in the community, positive solutions out there. And it starts with your schools. And uh, we got a shout out. Sorry, got to do our gratuitous uh, Facebook uh, shout outs. Uh, Miss Janet McDermott uh, works over here at uh, Wenaga Elementary. Good morning right. to you, Janet. Right. And then uh, good luck, Traven John, who's a second grader here at uh, Wenaga Elementary. Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah, so, oh wow, yeah, no, it's wonderful. We're going that way, maybe. I got the healthy option, baby. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, no, we're, the kids are excited today, you know, I, I, and especially the young kids. Uh, when they get older, they start talking about, you know, summer, why do we have to go back to school? Right, right. But you know, deep in their heart, they're trying to get back to with their friends, their routines right. that they yeah. usually settle into for the year. Uh, I think those first few, few weeks of summer, they're at the beach, and then afterwards they're saying, you know, when does school Ready. start? Yeah. <laughs> Parent, parents are especially, when does school start? When does school start? Yeah, well, you know, when I was counting down the school year, uh, the, the kids are the ones that say, stop reminding us, but the parents are like, ready to, <laughs> we're, we're, like, we're, we're counting down too. So, um, yeah, so we have our Sodexo staff here. Uh, these guys, you know, as you know, I think we mentioned it in a, in a news release uh, that we're able to serve all of our kids at no cost. Uh, school breakfast and school lunch. Right. So, um, you know, we've seen the participation go up in terms of the numbers of kids who are eating. Uh, and it gives us one less thing to worry about in terms of people, kids being hungry when they come to school. Right. And I mean, not just uh, being hungry when they come to school, but, you know, um, after school. I mean, really sad to say, and a lot of people don't know this statistically, um, some of these kids going to public schools, I mean, this is maybe the only study meal uh, they're going to get all yeah. day. And we've been in touch with the uh, USDA and, with, and working with our staff to figure out how we can address, like, uh, you know, what people call food waste, food that could probably go for better use if it's not being eaten. And so uh, I think we, we have some work, I think, to do with our local legislat uh, legislature to, um, I think there are some rules and regulations in place that we might need to adjust. Right, right. Uh, because we, we know school districts across the country are able to send food home with students, like you said, after school. Right. So if we're not, you know, if these bananas are still available, they're, they're, they're in good condition, they're, you know, ready to eat. You know, can we uh, send them uh, home with students? I think right now uh, our, it's our local rules that uh, prevent us from doing that just because of uh, the, the concerns about safety and health and right, so forth. Right. But yeah. I mean, they've done it in uh, districts uh, yeah. in the states. And it, I think it's a more of like a um, packaging kind of thing where you got to package it the right, right way. I mean, and, it's, it's, and uncommon sense too, but I mean, there are ways to make sure that they're safe and unused. So definitely not going to take things off of, pe of a kid's trays and put it in you know, in a bag for someone to eat. But if it's right. in the cafeteria, right. but just hasn't been taken and used or, and, and, ser and served, then we ought to be able to just transfer that to, uh, you know, in proper packaging to, to go I, home. I know you got a uh, busy day, but I just wanted to, to go back to kind of what you are talking about with uh, the volunteerism uh, that's so uh, prevalent in the public uh, school system. Uh, that bus cleanup uh, over the weekend, uh, you know, great show. And then you guys have been doing this for the last few years is where you get uh, people from the guard, uh, right. fire department, uh, Guam police, to kind of really uh, turn that first day of school into like a high five experience. So what was what was the thinking behind that? Well, you know, actually the police department kind of started this and you know, uh, Sergeant Tapao, you know, really, uh, you know, with Crime Stoppers and then in his role as a, with, the, with the police has really been an active partner, uh, really looking at ways to bring uh, uniform uh, law enforcement personnel into the schools before there's an, is, an incident. So uh, I know in a, in the past couple of years, I walk in and, and they actually started this high five program. I walk into an elementary school, see the two cops there and say, hey, what's the, what's the issue? I didn't get a call or I didn't get an alert. Um, they told me what they were doing. I said, you know, the elementary school students, they, um, man, they respond to the, to the people in uniform. Uh, so we said, uh, you know, this year, let's just even push it even further. So I know the fire department was out, uh, police department was out today, a guard and, um, you know the kids. The kids respond to. Um, you know the kids respond to the. Uh, you know especially when they're in uniform, and do it when they're not responding to an emergency or some kind of uh, issue at school. Uh, do it in a positive way. And so I was out there and you know high fiving them myself and just. <laughs> but really thankful for them because you know I'll get out there. Some people will know me. Some won't. Uh, right. Board members will go out there, uh, but you know they definitely know who the police officers are, the fire department, you know the firefighters, and uh, I hope we can do more of that. Uh, I also know Manyatlu, uh, one of our nonprofits. Uh, reaching out there as well um, and joining us, so that's really good. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I was up at DL and we, we saw, we saw um, guard uh, soldiers yeah. doing the high five thing while they were dropping their kids to the first day of school. So it's a little bit right. of multitasking. Well, exactly. Well, we got them assigned. Uh, we, we were looking at their assignments. Uh, some of them we knew were parents going to their school and then uh, getting into their high five mode. So. Uh, we really appreciate it. We know again these are our, you know when we talk about police police uh, officers, firefighters, our guardsmen. These guys are out there serving the community, out there on the front lines, and so it's good to again for the kids to see that, and hopefully they'll have a positive 
uh, influence. And so we, you know, hope to do more of that uh, as we go forward. So, you know, and maybe I'll get a uniform or something that they can, uh, you know, that respond, reaction, right? respond similarly. Yeah. Some of them know me, some of them don't, but right. definitely when you get a police officer there, kids just swarm and they just want to see who it is. And when they get a high five, I think they take that with them for the rest of their day. Right, right. So I, mean, I know you got a ton of things uh, going on, but I just wanted to give you one last chance here. Uh, you know, first day of school, not usually mixed with the budget process. I think they're a little bit late uh, this year, but did you want to, did you have any message about the budget or maybe want to implore the people out there to maybe give this process a little more scrutiny this year? Well, you know, right now uh, I recognize that we're, we're in a, um, a sort of financial crisis management mode, right? We've got revenues cut, now we're trying to make ends meet. But we got to turn the conversation into one about investment and ask about what we're investing in for our future and think about where the public schools fit into that. So um, I'd like to say that even as our budgets are being cut, that we're managing as much as we can within that. We are trying to keep our morale up for all the employees and teachers who have to come to work day by day to, to work directly with our students and trying to hold the, you know, hold the fort. But at some point, we got to turn around and say that this is what is this is this. The public school system is a key to our future. So we've got to figure out a better way to uh, invest those resources, make it make sure it's a safe place for learning, uh, make sure we're, we've got the right technology. We can't rely on the federal government to, pr to provide it all for us. We've got to figure out you know, locally where to put the dollars and, and uh, how, how that contributes to our long term prosperity. Well, there you go, Superintendent uh, John Fernandez uh, Soup. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here at Wedding Girl School. And hey, I know uh, parents, you're just getting home from that first day of school, probably a little teary eyed like some of us, uh, no names. Uh, so thanks for waking up uh, the KUAM uh, way. This has been Group Chat. My name's Chris. Esta adios.